Now, I've got an interesting story for you today, folks. This past Christmas, my wife and I spent a weekend at a bed and breakfast in Culpeper, Virginia, just doing the bed and breakfasty type things like going out to cool restaurants and antique shopping. And my wife did find all kinds of stuff for the farmhouse, but one of the cool things I found was a June 1940 issue of Outdoor Life magazine. Now, I really picked this up because I thought it was just a cool color. It would look pretty good framed in my office at work or on the wall behind me. But I'm thinking, before I do that, I should just read it. See what all was going on in 1940. And wow, everything about this magazine was pretty cool. But there was one article that stood out. It was called Dry Flies for the Beginner, and it was by Ray Bergman. Yeah, you heard that right. The Ray Bergman, the author of Trout, the seminal book on wet flies. You can see a copy of it on the shelf behind me. Now, on the surface, this article wasn't anything special. He talked about the three flies that he would recommend for a beginner fisherman. Got a ginger quill and a blue quill and then the royal coachman. But toward the end of the article, he wrote a couple of short sentences that stood out to me. Let me read those for you. This multicolor pattern, a two-color hackle, is destined to become one of the must-have flies for American anglers. Already it has won an enviable reputation since I first publicized it in Outdoor Life. And the fly he was talking about was the Adams. So I think he called that one right. Now a little after that, in another short paragraph, he talked about another fly in this style, one of his own creations, he called the RB Multicolor Variant. Now, he didn't have any pictures of this fly, but he did tell us all the materials in it and about how successful it had been for him. Now, it's a really interesting pattern, and as far as I know, it's never been published in any book, and there's absolutely zero information on it online. Now, it's not a particularly hard pattern to tie, and there's no exotic materials in it, but he does use the feathers from five different birds. I mean, they're all chickens, but still, that's a lot of different materials on one fly. He uses a badger hackle for the tail, some grizzly tips for the wings, and then three different color hackles for the collar, tied one right after the other. So that in itself is a pretty unique style. So today's pattern, from an 80-year-old magazine article, a Ray Bergman original that I'm betting not a lot of people alive today have ever heard of this thing, much less tied or fished it. Well, I think that's pretty cool. So there it is in the vise the RB multicolor variant. Certainly a unique pattern, but I think it's pretty cool looking. Now I'm tying this on a size 10. It's a barbless light wire dry fly hook. And I want to use some black thread that I will catch in up here in the first third. And the first thing I'm going to catch in, two grizzly hackle tips. And they're going to be pretty long because, you know, with spiders and variants, we do have really long hackle. So let's catch these in right there. That's going to be fine. Take our thread right back here behind them and try to prop them up about 90 degrees. Now Bergman did say to tie them spent, so let's spread them out and at least give, you know, 40 degrees or so. Okay, I think that's fine. Let's snip off this little excess here. Now let's take our thread to the back and catch in a tail. And he said use a badger for the tail, so I'm gonna take about 12 of these fibers. And how long I suppose is up to you. I'm gonna go about a body length here. And the body is a flat gold tinsel. This is a mylar, gold and silver. I'm gonna catch it in with a gold side toward the hook. So when I flip it to wrap, you will see the gold. And let's park our thread a good bit behind the, the wings because we're, we've got a lot of hackle we're gonna be putting on this. So go ahead and wrap this up and catch it off. Now that body is not perfectly flat, but I think we're gonna be okay. The first hackle I'm gonna catch in, some black dry fly hackle here. And I'm catching in a good bit behind these wings because my goal here will be to get four wraps of this and then four of each color, and we're doing three colors. So we might not be able to get it all, but we'll see. 
Got to remember that the hackle they used back in 1940 was a lot different from this whiting hackle that I've got right now. So let's do four wraps of this and see what it looks like for us. Okay, I think that's enough. Now let's catch in a brown feather, or what back in the day they called red, because you know these chickens that they came from were were Rhode Island reds, I think. And I have trapped a couple of those black ones going forward. We'll see if we can't fix that when we wrap this one. So this one I'm probably gonna to try to get three wraps behind the wings and then one in front. Okay, I think that'll work. And the last one up front, just some white. We're definitely gonna have some cleanup with this. I got fibers going all over the place. Okay, let's see how many of these white wraps we can get. I think that was three, that might be four, I don't know, but it's gonna be enough. Okay, I'm gonna snip this one before I work on the head. And let's see if we can just push everything back and clean up our head and get some room for a whip finish. Okay, not the prettiest head, but I think we're gonna be able to work with that. Let's quit finish it and then take a look at our cleanup. Okay, this is not as pretty as that first one I did, but you know what? If you're gonna put this in your box and fish, I think it's still a fishable fly, even as shaggy as it is. But yeah, I wanna clean up, pluck some of these long feathers out, snip them. Maybe put my singe tool up here to get rid of those. But overall, I think it's a pretty unique, pretty classic old pattern that has largely forgotten. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.